Okay, you are in the kitchen with Jelly 007, and tonight, pork loin in the Ninja Foodie. And uh, I'll say right quick that a lot of people don't buy this, this particular cut, and it is the whole pork loin. Now, it's not a tenderloin, it's a loin. It makes for some great food. It's a lot of bang for your buck, too. I mean, what we're going to do with what I'm going to do with this one right here is I'm going to cut it into three pieces, and all three pieces will be able to fit in here. And then I'll decide, you know, I'm going to cook one tonight, and I'll put the other two in the refrigerator. All three I'm going to be able to fit in the Ninja, and then the ones I don't cook within a few days I'll freeze, and uh, then you can cook them a different way. But tonight we're going to roast this. We're going to do a roast on it with nothing but salt and pepper. Now I mean it's a simple easy recipe and it's excellent not only that once you cook it if you don't eat it all tonight it's, it's breakfast you know or, or lunch or whatever in fact that's what i call this sometimes just breakfast lunch and dinner and uh, that's what you can do even after you cook it this right here tomorrow you reheat you slice off and reheat what you need if you don't eat it all again fifteen dollars and forty cents for nine point four five pounds and some excellent pork uh salt and pepper that's all i'm putting on it you can put a hundred things on it but there ain't nothing wrong with salt and pepper on this piece of pork right here and it's as simple as it gets so we're gonna i'm gonna cut to this chase 350 degrees and we're not going so much by time because we're again like i did on the lamb chops the other night we're going to use a meter it has got nothing to do with time we're going to be looking for temperature we're going to 145 internal now, I will say, if you do this, you know, I still, I think everybody needs a instant read thermometer. Now, there's plenty on the market, and a lot of them are very inexpensive, but you need some type, I think. You know, you want to be, a, you know, you never know. Mine might be a little different in size, so you don't want to go exactly by my times. Just check your own with your instant read thermometer. It, it, it's a great device to have, and I mean, you can get one sometimes as cheap as, you know, 20 bucks. So... I'm going to get this started. We're going to get uh, I'm going to get this cut up. We're going to get it in here and get it going. And I'll be right back. So y'all hold on just a second. Okay, so next step is to just season it. And with salt and pepper, like I said, and all I'm going to do is get all the sides and I'm going to put some on the board and roll it around in it and get the ends and all that stuff. And I'm going to do the same thing with the pepper. And it's just as simple as what I'm doing right here. And anyhow, when I get that done, we're going to put that meter in. But you see it, salt and pepper. That's all it's getting. I'll be right back. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to preheat the Ninja this time. I'm going to hit bake roast. And I'm going to take it to 350. And I'm going to hit start. And it's going to go to 15 minutes. But all I'm doing is preheating right now. We're going to set times different. But still, we're going by this right here. I'm not sure that you can read that. But this meter says it's 75 degrees on this tip right here. So we're going to insert that to about the center of this roast as close as we can get. So right there. And then again, I'll even check that. I mean, we're going to watch it here. See, it's already dropping 61, 60, 60 degrees. It's already dropping. Once it's done, we're going to check it with my thermopin also. So, we're going to make sure we're at least 145 at the time. You know, we may pull it at, so you could even probably pull it at 140 and it's going to carry over, but we're not going to pull it till 145. And then we'll all have an idea of what carryover is after about five minutes. So, we're going to let this preheat for about five, maybe 10 minutes. No big deal there. And then one other thing I'll say, I'm using this device that came with one of my ninjas. And the only reason, or not the only reason, but one, it brings it up a little bit, brings it up a little bit closer to the element. But I like these sides on it. I don't tie my roast. You know, so if you tie them, it doesn't matter. But this kind of helps it from flattening out any further. It might not be a bad idea to tie this large of one. But I'm not. I've never had before, and I'm not starting. I mean, I have on some things, but not these. So anyhow, when this gets preheated, I'll be right back. So we're going to clear that. In other words, we're going to turn it all the way off. And now, 350 degrees back on baked roast. Same thing. We'll go 350. 
and we're just going to put the time at an hour just to make it an even number that's easy to count down from, you know, because we're going to watch this temp. <laughs> Anyhow, we're off and running, and it is, I've got the time watched right now. It's like 10 minutes till 2, so we'll know in just a minute what we got. Now hold up. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of the one hour. We're at 127 degrees, and what we're going to do is open it up and look at it, and if it's not, it hasn't been opened at all. We're fixing to open it for the first time. And we're going to see if it needs the broil feature. If it's not browning like I like, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to let it go through its little cool down just because it does. 128. And yeah, I'm not going to do the broil. We're just going to go back to the 350 and go a little longer. That was the, uh, by the way, that was the end of... I mean, the, that was a large roast, and I used the large end, so I'm not going to change that temp any. I think it's fine. It'll be there in just a minute. It won't take long. In fact, I'm going to leave it for 15. I may have to change that, but we'll see. It should be there within no problem within 15 minutes, but be right back. Okay, so right at an hour and 10 minutes, we're at 144 degrees, and I'm going to go ahead and pull it out because it's going to go way past that with carryover cooking. And uh, I gotta just see, we look good. In fact, I'll show you before we remove it. It looks, it looks good. And uh, we're gonna lift that out of there uh, carefully. <laughs> like this right here. Cause I want it to stop that heat. I don't think it needs it anymore. In fact, I feel positive. Oops, can't do that. Had to turn that off. I feel positive I could have pulled it a long time ago because they're fixing to see. We're at 145, which uh, USDA says is safe. And I got a feeling within about, let's see, well, I lost my timer again, but I, I got the time right now. And we're going to see and say, well, it's three o'clock. So we'll see in a few minutes what that's at. And I'm going to let it rest for, say, five or ten minutes. But we'll see what it goes to. But anyhow, be right back. You know what? No, no, I won't be either. Hang on just a second. We're going to check it with the uh, with the thermopen since we can, just to make sure that the meter's accurate. And just because I want to use this, one of the other reasons. So that that meter should be about right here. Let's see what we get right here. So I may be a little deeper, but I'm four degree, uh, three degrees higher. So that's that's pretty close. I'm not complaining with that. And it, and it is kind of hard to hit exactly where that tip's at, you know. But 149, I saw 149, so it's three degrees difference, and that could be me off a little bit. But uh, plenty safe for USDA standards and uh, for anybody's, if you ask me. But anyhow, we'll be right back. Okay, so that's been 10 minutes. And it's went up about 11, 12 degrees. And, and I've been watching it. It's got really slow on the, how far it's been, how fast it's been going up. So I'm pretty close. Somewhere around 10 to 15 degrees is where it would stop on carryover cooking. So that just kind of tells you that. And that's all that's about. So I'm about to get it on this plate. And we're going to cut it up and see how it looks. So y'all hold up. Be right back. Okay, we're going to take, take a look at how it looks on the inside. And I think right there is a good place to start. And I don't believe you'll get much better than that. I'm going to go ahead and cut two slices. And like I said, that right there, that is a very good looking piece of meat for about $5. Because that's a third of a $15 piece of meat. So... I am still going to get me a plate to eat a piece of it and uh, let y'all know how it tastes. So y'all hold up just a second. Okay, so uh, pork loin, whole pork loin. I think it's a great deal. Like I said, you can uh, put it in the refrigerator and if you don't cook it for long, you freeze it in sections that you can get in that in an Instant Pot or your Ninja. And uh, a lot of things you can do with that. I'll probably do one of those videos for long, but this right here, there's nothing wrong with this way, which is just to roast it to uh, 145, and that's actually went to 155, and uh, 
let's see i got a feeling it is excellent and uh pork as everybody knows everybody loves pork and that is good not dry uh an excellent piece of meat and uh that is the thing with pork loins. You have to be careful. You can't cook them to 180, 190. They used to say 165 is what the USDA used to say. So you don't want to go much past where we're at, I don't think. 165 for sure would be the limit. So it's a good way to cook one. An hour and 15 minutes, $5, and feed several people. And tomorrow, or whenever... I mean, that works good on a biscuit. I mean, you can have, that makes good breakfast. But I don't have to tell y'all all this. Thank y'all very much for watching. I love y'all all. Come back to see me. Like, share, subscribe. Bye, y'all.